I'm Richard Hines, Dog Force One. This video is really for people who are in the market for a high level, real world, highly, highly elite skill, the best of the best of protection dogs that exist on this planet. This video is for our serious protection dog buyers.
Ah. Hey, stop. Freeze. You move, you're going to get hurt. You understand? All right, so we're going to add more control, and this is where we really start to change the game of protection. Now we're going to really control the situations. Now, here, this first segment here, you're going to see my Dutch Shepherd laying next to me on a bed. But she is not allowed to move from there. Okay? I have her next to me under control in my side position as if it was a heel. So I am I'm gonna have somebody break in the back door. She is going to hear it, but she's not allowed to react to it. I'm not allowing her. And the reason that I'm not allowing her is because it's too easy, right? Because the moment she senses he's going to break into the back door, she would just run from me, take off and go attack him at the back door. know she can do something simplistic like that right so it's not gauging her control her discipline and her level of skill okay so in this segment here you're gonna see all the clips here have some control where it's at the owner's side to keep them there and not allow them to go just attack unless the person attacks us, the owners, or we send them to attack. Otherwise, they must hold with no leashes and hold their aggression and desire and want to attack the threat but now there's rules and skills to the game. So again, keep in mind that all these pieces here, and especially this first one, that yes, 
if I would have let her, she would have ran to the back door and stopped this attacker immediately as soon as he came in if I would have allowed her. But again, we've already seen that skill in the beginning of the video. A remedial, simplistic skill that I know all these dogs here in this section can already do. Good girl. Good girl. That's right. <laughs> Strike out. Watch. Don't move. If you move, it's going to be a bad day. Good girl, strike. Everything that's precious. You put the dog out front. You know? Good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. There you go. There you go. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. Okay, and here with the Shepherd Rocco, the owner, he's drifting around in there in the office. And if she just lets him drift like this, he'll just stop me right there at the door and attack me right there's no exercise there's no control he would just do it right to defend the office so again here sue is going to take him and lay him next to her no leashes So this way, when I come in, because I already know, like he did at the backyard, at the gate door, the moment I entered the gate, he attacked me immediately. Didn't take long. We'll get the same thing here if we do not control him and put him next to us. So testing his control again making sure he stays there and uh, even when I taunt him going back and forth past the hallway <laughs> no matter how agitated he gets he must hold his position and not blow off until he's told <laughs> or I attack her 
He must hold himself, no leashes, control it until she tells him to attack me or I start coming running at her to threaten her. And then when you're ready, I'm gonna do fucking. Here is where the game changes drastically. Anytime there's two dogs attached, level goes up, money goes up. All right, move in, little Aaron. In there a little bit. Close in, close in, close in. Keep going. Close the gap a little more. Is that better? Yeah. Rebel, retire. All right, a quick level change, another level change, even though it appears to be pretty much the same exercise. It is drastically different than the previous one just now. The one before we had two dogs, one attacker, meaning the two dogs have to learn to hold one side together and only deal with one person. There's only one target. Now, when we have two attackers, the game changes dramatically. And to teach dogs to do this well is very, very difficult. 
because you have to teach them that they cannot both together only go after one attacker. And I've explained in some YouTube videos how difficult and complicated it is to get both dogs to focus on their own decoy. Right? Their own attacker. Naturally, and it happened to us in, ha in training with them, when you stick them together, they both zero in on one attacker, which is natural. They don't understand that you're vulnerable from the other person. They get so amped up that the two will just stalk one attacker and they'll tag team that one and allow the other attacker to get in on the owner. This is not an easy thing. It might appear simple and easy. This is extremely complicated. So it took a lot of work. We had to switch a dog to the other side when we tell them. So we have one and one here, not two on the same side anymore. That takes a lot of work. And then to stay focused on their own attackers and never let off the other attackers and try to tag team with the other one, switching positions to go after one attacker. All these problems, very difficult, takes a lot of time, a lot of skill on the trainer's parts. And this was no easy task. So this exercise is a very high up from this, just the previous exercise in skill level and money because of how difficult it is to teach and keep them maintained that way, not to make mistakes. control and skill. Tight quarters in the hallway, nowhere to go. I'm gonna have to get around him. He's on the queue of watch. So I'm gonna have to be really tight on the owner getting around Blitz, but he cannot touch me or try to bite me at all while I'm there hovering around the owner. So now I'm gonna start really making a lot of movements and messing with him and really trying to throw him off. There you go, I go touch the owner and right on cue he bites and does exactly what he should do. Perfect.
And now we come to the most difficult <laughs> exercise in all of protection training. This is an exercise you will see nowhere else. It has never been done as the previous exercises have never been done before by anybody or another company. Having two dogs guard the owner and stay with their decoys going circular around the body not allowing either decoy or attacker to get in on a weakness or an opening around the owner. Now, this might not look complicated to somebody, but I can't even tell you the difficulty of trying to get these two dogs to work together and making sure that they stay targeting their own decoy the whole time, not to allow a mistake, and again, behind the scenes in practice. This took over and over and oh, and I mean a long time and a lot of reps to get these two to focus on their own decoys and not team up on one decoy. It is very difficult, okay? And again, the dogs don't have sense of this. When they get emotional, and they get into that aggression mode to protect. Whatever they pinpoint most in their eye, and usually they are going to team up with the other one to pick one and go after that one, not realizing that you are vulnerable from the other attacker. The dog is not thinking this way. We had to make them think this way, unnaturally, and stay in their own lane and stay focused only on their own decoy no matter where the decoys went around they must stay in some position to make sure that their attacker never gets an opening to come in and get an attack can't even tell you the difficulty of getting this done <laughs>
protection dog seeker, give us a call. It's dog Force One. I'm Richard Hines. Till next time.